Welcome to A Fresh Start with Dr. Bobby Mullins, Executive Director of A Fresh Start Ministries. At some time, we all need a fresh start. And each week on A Fresh Start TV program, you'll hear a relevant message straight from the Bible, providing examples and principles to show us how to start over again. Join us now for this edition of A Fresh Start as Dr. Mullins proclaims from the Word of God how to live the abundant life Jesus desires for all of us to experience. Picking up the pieces of my life Bringing new releases Just in time, just in time Just when I'd exhausted All the ways to bring it all together He's picking up the pieces of my life. What is this desire? It seems we always have. We want to do things our own way. But when it comes to our human failure, we can't admit we were wrong. He's right there picking up the pieces of my life. Picking up the pieces of my life. Bringing new releases just in time, just in time. Just when I'd exhausted all the ways to bring it all together, he's picking up the pieces of my life. I'm looking back on my yesterdays. My life was scattered in oh so many ways. And I tried so very, very, very hard to fit the puzzle into place. But now I see your loving hands, Lord. They are reaching out to me. He's right there picking up the pieces of my life. Picking up the pieces is of my life bringing new releases just in time just in time just when I'd exhausted all the ways to bring it all together he's picking up the pieces of my life He's picking up the pieces of my life, bringing new releases just in time, just in time. And just when I'd exhausted all the ways to bring it all together, he's picking up the pieces of my life He's picking up the pieces of my life Thank you Jesus Welcome to a Fresh Start television program I'm Bobby Mullins, the Executive Director of Back to the Basics Ministries, 
and we sponsor a Fresh Start television program. You know, at some time we all need a fresh start, and one of the main purposes of our television ministry is to help people just like you and just like me to deal with the fresh starts that we need to make in life at times and to do so from a biblical perspective. You know, even preachers sometimes need a fresh start. I've recently accepted a pastorate down in Hernando, Mississippi, which is about 15 miles south of Memphis, Tennessee, down Interstate 55. And I didn't know at 60 years of age if I would go back in the pastorate again or if I would stay full time uh, doing our ministry with Back to the Basics. Well, I'm going to do both. And recently on the front page of the DeSoto Appeal section of the Memphis Commercial Appeal, they did an article about me and the article was titled, Veteran Pastor Gets a Fresh Start. They tied it in with the fact that back in December of 2011, I had a mild heart attack and had to have some stents put in and that was kind of making some major changes in my life physically but also it was a time, the day that I preached in view of a call at that church is the day that my heart attack symptoms hit me. So it's a fresh, time, fresh start in my life as far as uh, physically, but also uh, from a ministry standpoint. But I want you to know we're going to continue to minister here on WVLR and throughout the East Tennessee region. And so uh, we are a faith ministry and we depend upon the financial gifts and donations of those of you who view our program uh, and would like to support our ministry. If you could give to our ministry, uh, if you do so by mail, you can write me at uh, Back to the Basics Ministries at P.O. Box 32486, Knoxville, Tennessee 37930. Or you can go online to www.drbobbymullins.com and there's a donations link and you can give to our ministry that way. As long as we have the faithful givers from this particular area, we're going to continue to view our, our, air our television program here. But we also want to look to expand and you could help us to do that as we look to get on some airtime in the Memphis area that will reach into Hernando but not only Hernando, but into thousands of hotel rooms at the nine casinos in Tunica, Mississippi. You know, I found that some people uh, who might go to places like that who would never go to church, they'll watch a program on television. So we're going to continue a Fresh Start TV program. And we are so thankful for those of you who've helped to support us for these two years, and we want to continue on. Now each week on A Fresh Start, you'll hear a message from the Word of God, but we also like to provide for you special music, and uh, most of the special music has been done by me and my daughter Melody. Our daughter Mallory has joined us some, but we're going to be using some special friends of ours to help us out and uh, provide special music in the weeks ahead. So I know you've already been blessed by the music tonight, and we'll have another song before I bring a message. But I pray that tonight's broadcast of uh, A Fresh Start will be a special blessing to you and that through the music and through the message, the Lord will minister to you if you need to make a fresh start and that you can be able to say, as I always say, thanks be to you, O God, who gives us the victory through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I repent for moments I have spent Recalling all the pain and failures of my past And I repent for dwelling on the things Beyond my power to change those chains that held me fast I will go on my past I leave behind me I gladly take his mercy and his love he is 
is joy and he is peace. He is strength and sweet release. I know he is and I am his. I will go on. I give up. The bitterness and hate The blaming men and fate For all my discontent The guilt and pain I empty from my cup So God can fill it up With peace and sweet content I will go on, my past I leave behind me, I gladly take His mercy and His love. He is joy and He is peace, He is strength and sweet release, I know He is and I am His. I will go on, my past I leave behind me, I gladly take His mercy and His love. He is joy and He is peace, He is strength and sweet release, I know He is and I am His. I will go on. I will go on. Forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before. I will go on. My past I leave behind me. I gladly take His mercy and His grace. He is joy and He is peace. He is strength and sweet release. I know He is and I am His. I will go on. I guess every time I think about uh, the Apostle Paul and particularly the third chapter of the book of Philippians, I always think about that song, I Will Go On, uh, because it just ties in so well with the passage that we're going to look at tonight here on our message on the Fresh Start television program. If you have a Bible there with you, if you would turn to the third chapter of Philippians. I'm going to read two or three verses to get us started, then I will be referring back to some other verses. But I've titled this message tonight, Cleaning Out the Closets. Have you ever cleaned out the closets at your house? I remember that used to be a chore recently. I did some cleaning out of the garage at my home, and I want to tell you something. To have the time to do the cleaning out of my garage, I consider a luxury. You know, we're so busy today, and I remember Dr. Adrian Rogers, who still is touching millions of life worldwide through his Love Worth Finding broadcast even several years after he died. He spoke at a conference that I was at one day, and he was talking about in his community that they had moved to a newer home and finally he had some time to work in his garage and he said, fellas, it wasn't a chore, it was actually refreshing to him. And he just said it, he didn't have the luxury of being able to do that. And you know, I know what he means. Uh, when I left my last pastorate uh, for three years, I've had my books packed in boxes and some of the other things that I had, basically my entire office except for a few things that I had on the wall and a few other trinkets uh, such as you see here on this desk that we use for the television program. Most of those things have been packed up. I recently uh, accepted uh, the pastorate of a church and uh, in moving things into my new office I was able to get my books back out again. And you know we, we keep a cat around and we don't ever see mice but I noticed uh, so some people in the neighborhood thought that we might be moving at one time and they had moved in and they wanted to know if we wanted some of their moving boxes. So I went on and took the boxes and didn't break down some of them 
and uh, found out later that before they actually got their home, they had those moving boxes in a storage unit. And you know what I think moved into some of those boxes were some mice. <laughs> And so uh, we had, uh, evidently we had some in our garage at one time till we got a cat that's been able to kind of help weed them out. But I noticed when I was unpacking some of my books that the mice had done some chewing on some of those boxes and actually had chewed on just a handful of books. Now, I've told people, I guess they liked the book of Matthew because they chewed on my Matthew commentaries. But... It was such that it wasn't enough that really uh, would be able to keep me from using those books again. But uh, that's what I discovered as I began to clean out my garage and get some of those books back out again. But, you know, again, uh, I had files that I had kept properly uh, stored in alphabetical order and a couple of credenzas and then some uh, file cabinets that I had at church. At the time, and, and you know what was interesting? Now it, it's a different day, folks. We can find out about anything we need just by typing it in on an internet search. And I found out that a lot of those paper files that I kept through the years, I, I really don't need them. I guess there's some sentimental value and uh, to them. But I, I found the other day that I went to the um, we call it just the garbage disposal place, but. Uh, I took several boxes of files that I thought I needed at one time and actually threw them away. And I want to tell you something. It's, it was kind of freeing after all these years to think that I needed to keep files of all those things and not do it. And as a matter of fact, I, I guess in my own life, it's like getting a fresh start. Been in the ministry 30 years, a little over 30 years, but man, I'm looking forward to my next 30 years. And there are a lot of things that maybe in the past I thought I needed that I really don't need now. And that's what was going on with the Apostle Paul when we get to the book of Philippians. Uh, I like to title each book of the Bible when I write. Uh, I like to give the book a title. So I call the book of Philippians the book of living joyfully every day. And then I like to subtitle each of the, first, each of the chapters. The first chapter in Philippians is living prayerfully. Chapter 2, living purposefully. Chapter 3, living practically. And then chapter 4 is living peacefully. All part of the book, living joyfully every day. And you know, when the Apostle Paul wrote the book of Philippians, he was under arrest. He was in jail. Yet, he talks about in every chapter, the word rejoice is used on a consistent basis several times throughout the book. But in the third chapter, Paul is really doing what I call some whether it's not really literally cleaning out closets in his mind, in his life, he's cleaning out some closets. He says in verse 7, But what things were gained to me, I counted loss for Christ. And then verse 13, Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind, and reaching forth unto those things which are before, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. You know, when I reflect on a passage like this, I like to think about the historical time in which it was written. And Paul was writing about in his life that there were some things that he needed to count loss. Things that he needed to put behind him and be able to move forward. And I think sometimes in life, as far as a fresh start, there are some times I thank God for the fresh starts that He allows us to have. Sometimes we thought we needed something, like I thought I needed some of those files and, and things through the years that I really don't anymore. And to be honest, sometimes we hang on to that clutter and all it does is take up space that could be filled with much better things and things we need even more. And you know, when Paul wrote, but what things were gained to me, I counted lost for Christ. I began to think, what are some of the things that we hang on to that sometimes it, we'd really be a lot better if we just clean them out of our life? And so I want to share some of those. First of all, I think with the Apostle Paul, he really said right here, one of the things he needed to do in cleaning out his personal closet is that he needed to clean out past gain. Past gain in his life could have been something that would have hindered him in the present. Uh, as he was telling, he, he 
a couple of times he listed things that he could be very proud of, that could make him full of himself, accomplishments that he had attained. And he mentioned it here. He says, I guess I might have confidence in the flesh. If any man thinks that he has anything that he could trust in the flesh more than me, listen to what I accomplished in life. I was circumcised the eighth day of the stock of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of the Hebrews, as touching the law. I was a Pharisee. I mean, these were great accomplishments uh, of his nationality, where he was growing up, things that he had attained. He said, concerning zeal, I persecuted the church, touching righteousness which is in the law, which is blameless. And he talked about how he had gone about trying to destroy Christianity and Christians as much as possible. And then on the road to Damascus, Paul got saved. So he said, those things that were past gain to me. And there were many other accomplishments in Paul's life that he could have listed as far as his education. But he said, those things I count lost. And you know, I think sometimes in our lives, our past gain. And I'm going to tie another one in here with our past glory. Good things that have happened to us can sometimes hinder us. And sometimes we need to clean that out of our closet. Now anytime I've made a move through the years and I get a new office, there are some things I will always put up on the wall. I put up uh, my high school diploma. I put up my college diploma. I put up my Master of Divinity degree diploma and my Doctor of Ministry degree diploma. It took me a long time to be able to, to accomplish that, but I do it sometimes for people who come in. It's just to let them know my background and some things about me. And some people want to know how qualified you are. Well, sometimes I don't take so much stock in what degrees a person has reached as far as their, what degree they are with with the Lord as far as uh, fulfilling His will for their life. But I have some plaques that deal with uh, one that my seminary gave me after I served as president of the uh, National Alumni Board for a couple of years and you know, things like that. And I'm sure some of you have those things too. And, and they mean something to us. There's some pictures that I will always put up. But I don't just sit around all day and all I think about, boy, that was a good time then. I really wish I could go back to those wonderful times in my past and that's how I want to live. Folks, I don't want to go back to my past. I want to build upon my past from the good things. I've learned that some of the things where I've made mistakes, one of the things I don't want to hold on to them. But as we're thinking about the good things, yes, I want to build upon them and hope that they can be accomplished at other places. But I've been in some churches through the years that the Lord has seemed to send me through the years to churches that have gone through some type of difficult time, whether you want to call it a split or some type of contention. I've been to churches where the pastor has been asked to leave and, or another staff member, and, and you know, those kinds of things. But one of the things that, that I want to do when I go into a church, I don't want to just keep bringing up the past and what wasn't right. I want to build upon what's right and how the future can be different. But there are some people, they can't get over their past glory. I remember one guy, he never seemed to be happy. And I thought God was helping the church to get, get built back up after it had gone down for a while and the future was looking bright. But he'd just sit in a worship service. He'd never smile. He'd never open his Bible. You know, he just looked miserable. And one day I finally asked him, I said, what, what, what do you want in the church? And he said, I want it like when we had a lot of people here. And I said, you want to know something? When a lot of people were there and you... You went through it yourself. Why didn't you leave during the three splits they had over that time while you were still there? He didn't like that. But see, he liked it when all the people were there. But part of the thing, with the, they had three or four different groups in the church that seemed to have their own agendas. And the thing I tried to get across, do something now to start building the church again where we're all in one accord. So some people, they continue to the past gain and past glory get to them with others. It can be past grief. You know, the Apostle Paul, there were things in his life that could have been grievous. You know, they tried to, to stone him to death with real stones at least two or three times in his life. He was beaten for the cause of Christ. And I know with some people, one of the reasons they can't really 
get on in life is the things that they grieve over. And folks, I want to tell you one of the things we do as ministers. We help people who have to deal with grief. And at an early age, at uh, seven years of age, my mother's brother, a lieutenant in the United States Air Force, was killed on takeoff in a jet crash, a jet that he was flying. And as a young boy, I, I idolized him. I remember at that age, he was my hero. He was a pilot in the Air Force. And then a year later, within a year, our family had a car wreck and my grandmother was killed in that wreck. And my mother, in 10 months, half of her family, her brother, her mother, fortunately had gone home to be with the Lord through a tr tragic death. And I learned how to deal with grief early in life. It takes time to get over it. And every year, I mean, I always remember on those dates in August, the date when my uncle was killed in that jet crash when my grandmother was killed in the car wreck. I always remember those dates from year to year. So sometimes past grief can get to us, but folks, you got to learn, let God help you to get through it and to restore the joy. Another thing with Paul, past grudges. Oh my goodness. Paul, if I, I think there's some people in churches, they always keep a grudge. They can't ever, ever get beyond the, that grudge. You know, that song I sang said, I give up the bitterness and hate the blaming men in faith. For all my discontent. Some people always blame somebody for the reason they're not happy. Listen, I'm not going to let somebody who's done me wrong cause me to be bitter and hateful and to be just like them in so many cases. But Paul, past grudges, he writes over in the third chapter of, or fourth chapter of 2 Timothy some of those who uh, he could have had a grudge against, who had caused him some grief. Demas hath forsaken me. He loved this present world and now he's departed. Then he said, Alexander the coppersmith did me much evil. I mean, Paul had a reason to hold some grudges, but he didn't. He didn't let those grudges keep him from moving forward. Then his past guilt. Paul was one who tried to put people, Christians, to death. He could have regretted it all his life. Lord, forgive me. I heard about a woman who just could not get over something she had done. And finally her pastor said, Have you asked the Lord to forgive you? And she said, Yes, a thousand times. You know what the, Lord, what the pastor told her? He said, You ought to thank God for His forgiveness and praise God, God for His forgiveness a thousand times. Oh, folks, there are some closets we need to clean out in our life. Is it past gain? Is it past glory? Is it past grief? Is it past grudges? past guilt, I don't know what it is. But some of you need a fresh start and maybe to get that fresh start in life that you need, those are some of the things you need to clear out. And I know this, you'll be able to say, thanks be to you, O oh God, who gives us the victory through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Is it time in your heart to make a fresh start? Jesus came and we might have life abundantly. He said, come follow me and my truth will set you free. For he's the truth, the life, the way. And if you'll believe.